So we've got uh, three speakers tonight, and um, the first two inform me actually that their topics are going to induce misery and tears, which is not quite in keeping with the Catalyst Club. Um, but uh, our first speaker tonight, uh, Kath's been coming to the Kath Newell has been coming to the Catalyst Club for for years, and we've been talking and planning and scheming uh, this talk of hers this evening for a long, long time. So I'm really excited uh, and proud of Kath for having um, put this together. And it's a talk that's very close to her heart for reasons that you'll you'll discover very quickly. Uh, and the subject is autism. Hello. 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 Fantastic. I am. I'm here to talk about autism and disability. Autism is a profound, lifelong disability. Some call it a condition. One of my kids have it, and I wonder if you can tell which one. <clears throat> this is Axel, and this is Anusha. They're 9 and 11 now. And I didn't th know a thing about autism, and I couldn't see it. And this invisibility meant that for over two years, I thought my son hated me. If I tried to cuddle him or play with him, he would smash his head. Thanks to a kind friend and professional speaking up about their concerns, by the time he was three, he was fully diagnosed, and I preferred thinking something was wrong with me. This invisibility makes it very hard to diagnose for the parent carer and to be seen by the public. So <laughs> when Axel goes to Morocco's restaurant down on the front and he goes around and blows out everyone's candles, <laughs> the public and the staff can't understand why this fine-looking boy is doing this and why I seem to be letting him. They can't understand, he's only just learned to do this and that my means to curtail this behaviour are extremely limited. So people will tart and turn away and I can't remember what she said, she said, uh, that's really helpful. In her <laughs> Italian accent, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, when I explain to people, I'm really sorry about your broken, lost, eaten, taken away, whatever it is, uh, Axel has autism, people are really, really kind, uh, but I've yet to find anyone that actually knows what it is. So one of my aims tonight <laughs> is I'd like to raise awareness of this physically invisible disability, and I'd like to have a crack at explaining autism. It's really tricky, but it ain't Rain Man. <laughs> okay, great movie, <coughs> but in this, uh, Dustin Hoffman plays an autistic adult who uh, has mathematical genius and lots of skills. And so whenever you say autism, people go, oh, what's his speciality? And uh, <laughs> at this time, Axel is excelling at finding the things I hide. Absolutely fantastic at that. All right? Autism is what's called a spectrum condition. Asperger's is the term for the high-functioning area of the spectrum, and autism is the rest. It's a huge spectrum, and it does need better definition. Apparently around 50% are of normal or above academic ability, 50% has more profound social and communication difficulties, 25% are non-verbal. So the spectrum includes a Silicon Valley expert who finds it tricky to make relationships, and a non-verbal poet who needs 24-7 care for everything. But if, nevertheless, I think it's a really hard disability to have wherever you are on the spectrum, affecting the ability to communicate, to make friends, and to be in connection with others. And isn't it hard enough? It is now estimated that one in 88 people are going to have autism, and it's doubled in less than a decade, maybe due to better awareness, and that it's affecting one girl to eight boys, but stats vary enormously on this. So what is autism? Whilst there are extraordinary differences in the people across the spectrum, they all have three specific abilities impaired. It's a strange alchemy of things, sometimes called a triad of impairments, and it goes something like this. So one is speech and language. So someone with autism may have no language or a vast vocabulary. And if they do speak, what will be looked forward is the disordered or literal use of language. For the autist, metaphor, simile, innuendos, sarcasm and jokes are not naturally comprehended. So a little girl attending mainstream school who has autism was told by her peers to get lost. 
She was found by police many miles away from school, trying to get lost. Imagine how confusing language must be if you understand it literally all the time. So feeling blue, laughed my head off. I was in a right two and eight, Liverpool's playing Cardiff or getting my shit together. So, literal speech, it's very difficult. So number two is social communication. You know, talking, if talking's really difficult, then the other stuff is about how we communicate with our bodies. We have facial expressions, body language, uh, we sense the atmosphere. For the person with autism, this is like trying to imagine the sixth dimension. An extraordinary woman with autism called Black, Ros Blackburn, who lectures and is severely autistic, she's extraordinary, and she, she recounted this personal example to try and explain something of this, this business. So she went to retrieve her bag from a lecture hall, and when she got there, there was two people in it, and one of them was crying. And she feels panic and wonders what to do. Um, should she disturb them or not? And bless her, she, she said that she looked for onions. Yeah, she knows onions can make you cry. So maybe there's some onions in the room. And there's no onions, and so she listens and she hears that the cat has died. And even then she's going, well, you know, you could be like, really happy. You hated the cat. Maybe I should congratulate her. These are tears of joy. Anyway, all the while, she knows she doesn't know how to behave. She knows, and she feels very anxious. We would feel what to do. We can read the signs. For the autists, they try to process what to do if they are able enough. So this ability to, to read this language stuff that we do is impaired. The third impairment I found really hard to explain. It's called uh, theory of mind, impaired empathy, and all of that. Um, basically, the ability of the autist to theorise that your mind and your experience is different from theirs, this is impaired. This profoundly affects the ability to empathise, to think as another, and this impacts on the ability to be in relationship. How can you care about someone else if you can't imagine that they think differently? I sense that Axel cannot care what I think or feel. It's not that he doesn't or chooses. He doesn't have the neurological network to care about me. Their play skills are usually limited and different. Often uh, small children are seen lining up cars, doing strange things like that. This impairment is all about imagination for me. It's about the ability to imagine another's mind, imagine that a small car is like a big car out there, which is not to say they don't have fantastic imaginations, they're just not familiar. And it can be sadly impossible to imagine what is distressing a non-verbal autist. <coughs> so those are the three abilities assessed for diagnosis defined by Kanna in 45. A brain disorder characterised by the inability to socialise and communicate. But something else now recognised as common to autism is sensory impairments. This can mean too much or too little input in the five senses. And Axel wears ear defenders all the time, to sleep, to swim, to bathe, everything. Smell, taste, touch and light can be difficult in an absolutely amazing myriad of ways, really impacting on the individual and fear, we all feel fear all of the time. Right now, I might be feeling a modicum of it. Will you like me? Will <laughs> this work? You know, how are you doing? Imagine having all the normal human anxieties and this triad of impairments and your senses are screaming at you. So it's no wonder that there is a common desire for the safety of routines. And if we tap and twitch when we are anxious, can you imagine, no wonder we see the extreme behaviours in our autist loved ones. When stressed, Axel bangs his head, bites and scratches himself and you. <laughs> Are you feeling entertained yet? <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse, don't worry. <laughs> right, it can be exceptionally testing to support these remarkable people. And sadly, there are dreadful incidents where people have not coped. And this is a newspaper thing. George Hodgins, 22, described as a young autistic man who didn't speak and needed a lot of supervised care, was fatally shot on March the 6th by his mother, Elizabeth Hodgins, 53. She then turned the gun on herself. Neighbours and friends said she was increasingly tired and depressed about not being able to find the proper programme for George as he grew older. The bodies were found by George's father, Lester, a Bay Area park ranger from California. And life with Axel can be tough. 
We've explored years of all kinds of therapies and we still have no language. I have never talked to my son. I still support all his care needs and very ordinary tasks can be very difficult. He's getting strong, fast, willful and can be aggressive. We've lost him seven times now, needing police and helicopter support to find him. Axel demands 24-7 supervision. Our houses are locked down. Locks are everywhere. Axel breaks so many things, things you cannot imagine you'd like to break. Dimmer switches, I get the up and down, but cracking them, flooding the bathroom I also get, but it is stunning what he gets up to. We've lived with a profound lack of sleep. Axel often enjoys a four o'clock start. Sleep and autism are not bedfellows. There is also the physical and emotional tiredness to contend with and fear of the future. It's a very hard experience on siblings. We have very limited play skills. We're limited in what we can do. It can be really isolating and it can break families. So if the divorce rate for a normal family is 30% with a disabled child at 60, we're cracking up in the 90s for a severe autist. <sighs> <laughs> But here we go, we're on, the, we're on the up now. Right, the mark of a civilised society is the way it treats its most vulnerable citizens. And we may all well be vulnerable at some point in our lives unless you cleverly die before an accident or illness, and stats say that's unlikely. <laughs> it's really cheery, isn't it? Really cheery. Right, but thankfully, our society does provide support to ensure some balance and quality of life for all. We have brilliant therapists for communication and play. We have a fantastic hillside school. Axel's in a class of five boys with amazing teachers with fantastic teaching practice. We have wonderful, loving carers... I love this woman. This is Heather. She's been working with us for a couple of years now. She comes into the house and she helps to keep him happy and safe. There's fantastic education for parents out there like me to help me, to teach me to care for Axel. We've even been offered a suitable holiday place to go to, which is modified for people with special needs, so we can actually get away and get some rest and fun. This, sadly... Now he's nine, he's actually started in a respite care home. And actually, Axel goes in seven nights and 28, and this enables me to get some sleep, spend some time with my daughter, get some rest, and start back to the design work I used to love. I also want to work out how I can help in this arena. I have been supported to fight for and access help, and I've been supported to accept it. Lydia Brown is an autist of the Self-Advocacy Network and she asks for these things from the able-bodied people. Acceptance, respect, support, inclusion, and to be heard. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be friends with the prettiest girl. I think I was scared of anything funny or different. And it is often felt that this is the attitude of the able people that uh, disables them most. So another aim of this talk is to advocate our love and support for people with autism or any disability for that matter. Axel will need 24-7 care for the rest of his life. Temple Grandin is a wonderful autistic woman who made her fortune due to her autistic sensibilities. Maybe some of you have seen her film, Temple Grandin. She lectures and she's very, uh, she's wonderful, she said. If it wasn't for the autism gene, we'd still be standing around in caves chatting. But she reckons it was the Asperger's guy who went and fashioned the first spear and moved out of the cave. <laughs> that Silicon Valley was founded and is people by them. Autists are remarkable people. And there are many people in history thought to display autistic traits accounting for their brilliance. Einstein, Tesla and Newton are three of them. And where would we be without Gary Newman? <laughs> apparently Daryl Hannah is as well I thought she's marvellous so. anyway all right but I mean, I've just mentioned a bunch of what are called high functioning people and Axel is called low functioning I don't find these terms particularly helpful and how do you judge a person I think I'm a better person for knowing Axel mindful of this not everything that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted so what is Axel teaching me? He's teaching me loads. I'm learning to speak positively. Axel doesn't understand negatives, so there's no point in saying, no running, stop running. He goes, yeah, I am. Uh, we need to, I need to say, Axel, walking. 
Right? Apparently the Brits are particularly great at saying what we don't want. We do not say what we do want. Right? They did this lovely research project. They went into homes all across Britain, across race and class, and they had little clickers for negative and positive uh, comments. And I, I was shocked. It's, uh, it's 19 negative to one little positive comment there. <laughs> So when I say to Anusha, don't leave your wet swimming stuff on the bed, and there they are on the floor, uh, I didn't say what I did want. And, you know, and it's really difficult. Sometimes we don't know what we want. It makes you, I feel really vulnerable asking for what I want. It might not happen. It seems easier to complain. But I invite you to have a go and try and speak positively for one day. It's really difficult. In fact, I suggest this evening, especially, obviously, with feedback to me. <laughs> <laughs> communicating due to Axel's different way of communicating and needs. I feel better able as a communicator and much more sensitive to a broader range of needs. <clears throat> I'm learning to stay curious and compassionate. Not always possible. But having been out with Axel and encountered how we can be misunderstood, now when I see something I find strange, instead of reacting with judgment, I try to stay curious and learn what's really going on. I would like more smiles and less staring. I do. I, do. I sometimes think Axel should open a boot camp or a Dharma school or something, because the next way is just so Buddhist. Right. We're being with Axel really is about living in the moment. You really don't know what is going to happen next. Uh, it is about totally giving up your expectations, a ton of patience and gratitude. I am so grateful for all that I have. And it really is about love. To love and accept him as he is, not as I want and this includes this stuff. Love me when I least deserve it, because that's when I really need it. I love that. Don't I need that? You need that? He certainly needs that. And Axel is amazing. Imagine what it's like to be him. Autistic spectrum conditions, severe learning difficulties. He has, I can never say, ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. He's hyperactive. He's got learning difficulties all over the place. He has eczema and asthma, just for fun. And he is generally a happy, cheeky, mischievous little fellow. And I love this quote. The old mate Right. And those who were seen dancing were thought insane by those who could not hear the music. And De <laughs> Axel definitely dances to his own tune. He has his own ways of playing. <laughs> Imagine not worrying about what people think of you. He doesn't care to please you. He doesn't care to displease you. No means do it when I'm not looking. <laughs> people are jealous of his freedoms. He has no language. He can't read. He has no concept of making friends or of playing with anyone, and he gets by. He makes his own fun. I love this. Look at that. When mum takes your TV out of your bedroom because it's bedtime, get an extension flex. <laughs> As we all know, eggs are very versatile. I can't tell you the number of things you can do with those in the supermarket or at home. This one's a great one. Look at that. Flour is great. You can decorate with it. Obviously, it's edible as well. So it's a snack and a toy. <laughs> and occasionally mum does this thing called angry. And that is just so super exciting. You're always trying to get a bit more of that. <laughs> and he, he loves physical play, right? So he's actually great at cycling, trampolining. He's a fantastic, unbelievable climber. And he likes swimming. But what child, when they're in the swimming pool, gets out of the swimming pool to drop their pants and pee into the <laughs> swimming pool. It was just fantastic. Little old lady, lovely. <laughs> anyway, anyway, seriously, so last thing. As I learn to understand and accept, if not welcome and love, all the differences in him, I am better able to understand, accept and love the differences in the world, in my life, in you, and perhaps the biggest challenge, the differences in myself. And I finish with this Michelangelo quote. I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set it free. Thank you very much.
them one day. A magic day he passed my way. And while we spoke of many things, food and kings, this he said to me. Is just to love and be loved in 